Hi, my name is Quincy Davis, Assistant Professor of Drum Set at the University of North Texas. Today's lesson is on traditional grip. Traditional grip was created as a result of how drums naturally hung from the necks of early military marching drummers. As you can see in the photos, the drums are tilted to the right side, which would have made playing with match grip pretty difficult. Now, I often get this question, and my answer is no, but I highly recommend it for the following reason. Traditional grip is an integral part of the evolution of this instrument because most of the icons of this instrument use traditional grip, even up through the 70s and early 80s, regardless of the genre, rock, fusion, funk, blues, and of course, jazz. Most of the drummers still use traditional grip. So learning how to use this grip means you'll be more in tune with the feeling that the drummers, the great drummers of our time played with in the left hand. If you're more accustomed to using match grip for more hard hitting genres, traditional grip would definitely feel very different and perhaps suddenly put some limitations on, on what you feel like you can play. But it's not necessarily such a bad thing to suddenly feel limitations because I do believe that you will start to feel more like jazz and think more like jazz and hear more like jazz, which a lot of times means playing less notes with more feeling and playing much quieter than perhaps you're used to. Now, my personal story is that I really wanted to learn this grip because frankly, it looked cool to me. And I thought if Elvin Jones and Dave Wecko and Lewis Nash played holding the stick like that, well, then I wanted to be like them and do the same thing. So I forced myself to use traditional grip for a month exclusively playing for a local musical in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's where I'm from. Uh, not really understanding the mechanics at all, but the music was easy enough that it didn't demand great technique to execute. So it was a perfect setting to work on it. Just doing that really helped me get more comfortable with the grip and honestly I did start to feel more like a jazz drummer. Now with all of that said, ultimately it doesn't really matter which grip you use as long as you can make the music feel good, staying authentic to the style you are playing. Okay, let's compare match grip to traditional grip. The first and most obvious difference is the direction of the palms. With match grip, the palms will either face downward as they do with German grip, face inward as they do with French grip, or somewhere in between as they do with American grip. With traditional grip, the palm usually starts out facing inward, but opens up to face the ceiling upon lifting the stick. There are some drummers who prefer to start with their palm facing the ceiling like this. Then there are other drummers who prefer to face their palms to the floor like this. Both of these approaches are a bit unconventional and technically limiting, but some of my favorite drummers actually play like this. So if it works, it works. The second big difference is the location of the fulcrum. With match grip, the fulcrum is either between the pointer finger and the thumb, or the ring finger in the thumb. With traditional grip, the fulcrum is usually snug in the web of the thumb. That's the technical term. The third big difference is the motion. With match grip, the wrist flexes and extends. With traditional grip, the wrist supinates and pronates. 
Now those actually are the technical terms. Now I'm going to show you some exercises that will help you get more comfortable with the grip and the motions associated with it. The first thing you must get comfortable with is the location of the fulcrum. This exercise will ensure that you are balancing the stick properly and maximizing the motions that are achievable with this fulcrum. Find a good location that's not too close to the end of the stick, but also not too close to the middle of the stick. Now try to wiggle the web of your thumb and move the stick up and down. Now let's try to add more range to the motion by turning the doorknob. Now let's use a drum pad and try the same exercises. Notice how I'm keeping my thumb nice and erect. This helps me keep my fulcrum firm, allowing the rest of my hand to relax. First finger, second finger, my middle finger, third finger, and the pinky. Try to keep all of your fingers nice and relaxed. A common sign of tightness is when your pointer and pinky fingers overcompensate for the lack of control in your fulcrum and start to overextend underneath the stick. This will get in the way of the natural rebound. For this technique, my thumb is more actively engaged in propelling the stick forward. Now in addition to using my thumb, I'm using my pointer finger to push the stick down. You can also try playing like this. All right, well, that's the lesson. Hopefully this will be helpful to you as you learn traditional grip or improve your current technique. Now, if you want more personalized Q-tips with your traditional grip or any other aspects of your playing, I offer Skype lessons and really enjoy helping drummers and non-drummers from all over the world. Feel free to visit my website for more information. And for my friends in Japan, Nihongo ga hanasemasu kara. Eigo ga dekinaku temo. See you on the next Q-tip lesson. <laughs> feeling limitations, feeling limitations suddenly isn't. Now feeling, feeling, feeling limitations. <laughs>